that you had me to I wish I knew how to quit you. Mm, and they're speeding so we can There's no place like home. I'm going to make them an offer down with you. Up with an intro. Oh well, that's I'll, I'll think of something on the fly. You're not at TIFF. I'm not at TIFF. Are you TIFFed about it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite TIFFed. Some might even say I'm quite miffed about not being at TIFF. <laughs> this is gone with the wind. <laughs> I'm tiff, tiff, Tiffy. You know the, the Tiffany? I don't think we're alone now. Great song. Love that song. Cue the music. Well, that was random. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Gone with the Wind. You can definitely see I had no intro to begin with. I didn't come up with one today um, for some reason. I just didn't think about that. I got everything else situated, but no intro. But hi, I am Manning Franks, host of Gone with the Wind, the show about award shows that we talk about, you guessed it, award shows. And with me, we have a cavalcade of characters, your regular characters, your cast of caricatures that are, in fact, a, an ensemble. We got Dan, the man, Skip Allen. Yeah, we got the band back together again, and, and you know, I'm on bass, you're on lead vocals, we got the drummer, and we got, uh, you know, the guy on keys over here, Abe. So we got the whole band back together. It's great. I'm glad everybody's back together. Can't wait to get into this. I was about to say, I'm wondering now, do any of us play instruments? Malcolm, uh, uh, Malcolm is here. Malcolm, do you play any instruments? I do not. <laughs> but Malcolm's here. Hello. <laughs> Regardless. Yeah, this should be fun. All right, and Abe. Tell us a little more about your your ability to play any instruments, possibly. I know a song with the flute. That's how it's called. I don't know. Ooh. Got, I have the keys. You got Jethro Tull. I have the keys. I hear can you. See me? You I, cannot see me, right? I can't see you, but I can hear you. <laughs> oh, Malcolm's got the keys. Oh, my God. We all have the keys. Well, this is I'm pretty sure that's what Abe was doing. <laughs> oh, wait, so you both were doing... Well, we can't see Abe right now, so this is off to a fantastic start. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, I can see you. He's, he's, he's being... Uh, what is that movie about with um, Justice Smith and uh, Sidney Sweeney, The Voyeurs? I haven't seen that yet. I've only seen like the trailers of it. But, but Abe is basically a voyeur right now. He's oh. just <laughs> watching us. I love the I love Thank you all again for joining this episode. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Connor Lightbody last week for hopping on and being willing to do a quick uh, hour interview. It was supposed to be 30 minutes, turned into an hour because we had so much. So again, Connor, uh, props again, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule at Venice. Uh, I know it was the end of your day, but thank you again for coming up and doing a quick interview with us here at Gone with the Wind. I appreciate that immensely, sir. And uh, uh, Abe, I don't know if you listened to it. I know you don't listen to, you don't go back and listen to stuff you've been in. Um, but, uh, did you hear, he, he, we talked about Mamma Mia temporarily for like five seconds. Do you have to say something about Mamma Mia every time you say Mamma Mia? Well, no, we just talked about it and I just wanted to know what your thoughts were upon that. We talked about it for five seconds. We brought it up. Uh, look, many. I haven't watched Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Like, for the, in the last month. I haven't watched. <gasps> I feel bad about it. Wow. I've seen it like 20 times this year. That's one of your defining characteristics. I'm very shocked. Uh, yeah, I know you love Mamma Mia, but we talked about it temporarily in reference to the lost daughter because it's not Mamma Mia, but it might be. We don't know. It might be a threequel. Regardless, thank you again for joining Gone with the Wind. Tangents aside, we're going to talk about what we have seen before we get into the meat of today's topic, which is about, you know, the Tiff People's Choice winner in a spoiler alert, Belfast, a possible best picture front runner now, maybe. Uh, also, some trailers ranging from Nightmare Alley, West Side Story, Don't Look Up, The Humans, Come On, Come On, and Dear Evan Hansen in its final trailer before it releases this week. But before all of that, we want to get into what we have seen this week. And I know for a fact, someone on this panel has seen the eyes of Tammy Faye, and it does not open near me in the next little bit. So, I sadly cannot see it just yet. But someone I know has. But before he mentions that, Dan, what have you seen besides the eyes of Tammy Faye? Well, I'll tell you what, I saw an unbelievable movie. Make sure you bring your tissues with you. Uh, it's called Blue Bayou. Oh, my God. Justin Chan and Alicia Vikander. Um, it's, it's just it's just uh, an absolute jerker about um, people that may be illegal. Very, very well done. Written and directed by Chan. Um, 
it's kind of under the radar. It's another focus features, which I didn't get a press screening for. There's like four in a row from focus. Blue Bayou. Oh my God. I cannot say enough about Blue Bayou. You got to go see this movie. Cry Macho. Clint Eastwood's doing a neo Western. The Western icon, Clint Eastwood, is doing a modern day Western and there might be a chicken involved. So uh, just stay tuned for that. You know, he has to go to Mexico and get this boy and bring him back to the States. That's basically, the, you know, and Dwight Yoakam is pretty much the villain in the movie. So you got Dwight Yoakam, Clint Eastwood, you got a chicken. Yeah, you know, how can you go wrong, you know? Um, <laughs> I know it sounds funny, doesn't it? It sounds interesting to say the I least. I did see the Boyers, though. Oh, boy, I like the Boyers. Like a, a twisted version on Rear Window, uh, which was pretty interesting to me. I I, I really like the, the Boyers. Uh, Kate, uh, mm. Mary Elizabeth Winstead, she's playing a badass, you know. Um, what else did I see? I don't know if you count TV shows, but I, I got the chance to see Why the Last Man, all the four episodes that are out. At, oh, I, can't, I read that oh, graphic nice. novel, and I was so, so hoping they would make a movie of it. And we were gonna, they were going to make a movie with Shia LaBoots, but they ended up not making it with Shia LaBoots. And they ended up making it with this other kid, and it's on Hulu. So recommend Why the Last Man. Also, my my screening, my uh, my review is up right now for Midnight Mass. Doesn't come out till Friday. Yeah. It's the latest series on Netflix, star uh, written and directed by Mike Flanagan, the guy that did a Haunting of Bly Manor, Haunting of Hill House, Doctor Sleep, all those. So I really, really enjoyed uh, Midnight Mass. Also, um, I'm only one one episode into. Um, uh, the Lost Symbol on Peacock, which is a prequel to the Robert Langdon trilogy by Tom Hanks from Dan Brown. So only one episode into that. But I got a lot. I watched a lot this week. I was about to say, you definitely caught up when I I was on vacation last week, so I saw two movies. I didn't see too much, kind of relaxed on the beach, but I managed to watch a little bit, and I'll get to that in a second. But you mentioned The Eyes of Tammy Faye. That's what I want to hear about. Yeah, um... I, you know, I was high on uh, the eyes of Tammy Faye going into this. And Jessica Chastain, as of today, whatever today's date is, the 20th of September, I believe it is, is the front runner for the Academy Award. That has a caveat to it. I have not seen Spencer yet. I have not. So I can't say anything about films I have not seen. But the front runner for the Academy Award for Best Actress is Jessica Chastain. She is incredible as Tammy Faye Baker. Wow. I'd say Andrew Garfield's more of a caricature. Um, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is kind of, he plays this type of role in a lot of different movies and TV shows. The, the yeah. villain type of role. And he plays Jerry Falwell. Uh, but they really do a nice job of going into their life, their rise to fame and, and, and fortune, and then falling down. Whereas respect kind of keeps touch on every little thing. I mean, it's just like, this is what respect should have been. They should have touched on some of the bigger things and then moved on. But this movie is what you expect from a biopic. And uh, Jessica Chastain is a producer on this thing. So she knew what she was doing. Mm. The prosthetics, the makeup, the eyelashes, the everything, the fat suit, the, the cheeks. I, I hope, I, I mean, for my, for her sake, I really hope she gets an Oscar nomination. She has a legitimate shot at winning because she's fantastic in this movie. Obviously, the, if you know anything about televangelism, you're in North Carolina. You're the yeah. hub of televangelism in North Carolina. Don't man. out me just yet, Dan. <laughs> that was the hub of it of back in the day, boy. All them corrupt televangelists. But uh, yeah, God, mm. she's amazing. I cannot say enough about how amazing Jessica Chastain is. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. I will, By the time we have our next episode next week, I will have seen The Eyes of Tammy Faye and I'm really excited because Jessica Chastain, I feel like, has completely... She has not gotten the recognition she deserves after Zero Dark Thirty. She missed out on some nominations, but I think a most violent year, perhaps, may have she Molly's received game. one. Molly's, Molly's game. game. Um, so there, she's done a lot of consistently great performances, but I just managed to miss out for a multitude of reasons, be it some other people, but 
Um, but maybe this is the one because it is transformative and the Oscars always love when people go, uh, what's the word? They go full monster uh, in this and looking at Charlize Theron. Or uh, Churchill. They love the, or Churchill. They love the de-glamification when you really go de-glam. Um, but if it's a great performance too, that can only make it a plus. And she's on HBO Max a uh, show, um, uh, Scenes from a Marriage with Oscar Isaac. So her and Oscar Isaac are having a, a bit of a, a go at it right now with all the different things that, that they're in. And that's a remake of a Ingrid Bergman film from 40, 50 years ago. So they're making that into a TV show on HBO Max, the, uh, the scene, Scenes from a Marriage. And those two obviously did a, a most violent year together. So, And yeah, so... Uh... Before we mention some of the other ones, I want to say um, uh, I know that for you, Malcolm, cinemas were closed. Has that changed at all? What is the update on that? Have you seen things? I mean, I've seen things. Yeah, I've seen lots of things. But, um, yeah, but cinemas like have, have opened up again for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, I still haven't had a chance to see much, but I finally got around to seeing Candyman. Um, it was all right, um, and I I also watched um, Kate uh, on Netflix. Um, that was fine, um, but and um, I also saw Vacation Friends, which I thought wasn't okay. that great. I mean, it, oh, it was funny. It, it still had it. It was it was still funny. It was fine. It was three three out of five stars for me, sir. So. A little, a little raw Howry goes a long way. I have, I totally forgot about that movie. I, I love Lil Well Howry. He's having a great year. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of great movies. Hey, you know what? Get, get out brought him for better or for worse. Get out brought him to the forefront, and now he is here to stay. Um, I mean, at this um, he's been in about three movies this year, like Space Jam Two, um, Free Guy, and now A Vacation Friends. And let's not forget his performance as the not host in the Oscars this past year. I mean, we could forget that. I mean, is it? <laughs> you don't want to forget the butt? Who wants to forget the butt? <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we want to. Come on. I already forgot the, the butt part until you brought it up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've scarred you for life. It's that image of Glenn close to in the butt. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Malcolm, anything else you've seen, Malcolm? Well, no, but um, I'm surprised at how many movies Lil Howard has actually been in this year. I know. <laughs> he, he was in Judas and the Black Messiah, Tom and Jerry, Bad Trip, Fatherhood, Space Jam 2, Free Guy, Vacation Friends, and post-production in a movie called National Champions. Jeez, he is working <laughs> to the bone this year. Good on you, sir. Backlog. These are all movies you filmed years ago. They're all just coming Probably. out. Probably probably last year and then pulling this year. So that's probably two years together. Cause that's what I've done with a lot of films. I'm probably going to do in the coming uh, years or whatnot. Um, but Abe, what have you seen? My good sir. I mean, apparently he's muted on the, on. <laughs> I'm muted. Can you yes. hear me? Uh, yes. I can, can hear you. Now, okay. Uh, what, I, what, what? <laughs> I watched this game room tournament of champions. That was something. Mm. You know, that was fun, I have to say. It's so stupid and bad that it's fun. Like, I say my sister, go ahead and watch it, and she hated the movie. <laughs> so I get to no. do something wrong for her. Uh, also, I watched Cry Macho. I really liked it. I thought it was, like, you know, I think Clint Eastwood is in the stage of his career that he just does service of films, takes a script, says, okay, give me, I don't know, 25, 30 million dollars. I shoot it. I'll do something fine with it. I'm Clint Eastwood. I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> uh, but it's true. Well, yeah. he retired. Uh, Abe, yeah, he retired from matter? acting, and now he 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 has started two movies about two old men doing bad stuff. Yeah, you're right. The, the mule. mule. I forgot about the mule. Yeah. He figured that would be right up his alley, so he said, "Well, I'll come out of retirement for those those roles for movies that I, I choose think to do." I think he's gonna direct another one. He just wants. To. I think he oh, can. Gonna... Yeah, I can right, keep Abe. waiting. Yeah, you he's know, gonna he's he's working. gonna he's gonna work until he God God forbid. I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but he might he probably might die while directing a film. <laughs> that's Clint Eastwood. That, I, I, I I don't want to say that, but that's the type of guy Clint Eastwood is. He's gonna work until he's dead. 
I, I, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. A, a lot of directors go say, oh, yeah, I'm going to retire now, but I'll take that when I believe it. Like, mm-hmm. there's some people like Jack Nicholson, who I truly believe has retired for good. He's not going to make any more appearances. Yes. Well, but there's some that have said they're going to retire. They come back into another movie. <laughs> Jack had um, dementia. That's why he's Yeah, no, I know. He was supposed to do the remake of Tony Erdman. He was going to be the... T- but... He just couldn't do it, I don't yeah. think. Unless it's, I, doing I good. mean, you never know. It might come out, actually. Who knows? I mean, I know Mike Flanagan tried getting Jack Nicholson for um, a cameo in Doctor Sleep, but um, uh... but Jack was like, my character died in the trial. It's not really going to make that much sense. And he, and he didn't he do want to do it either. So. He's in the picture. Right, there you go. Um... Yeah. Oh, I forgot one man, too. The card yes. counter. I saw the card oh. counter last week. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm a big fan of uh, Paul Schrader, and um, the mo- Oscar Isaac is the reason to see this movie. I mean, it's got some heavy topics, and I don't really want to get into. It, and if you if you guys haven't okay. seen the movie, Tiffany Haddish looks like she's in another movie. Uh, but the mo- the reason to to see this movie is Oscar Isaac. He is mesmerizing, and I use that word very deliberately mesmerizing i mean you cannot take your eyes off of everything that oscar isaac is doing in this movie. dan i already can't take my eyes off of oscar isaac regardless go ahead <laughs> but yeah yeah he is amazing in this movie uh, it was a coup for schrader to get him because and there's also one the foe in it and um so yeah i just i wanted to mention the card count i forgot about that i will actually be seeing that on i'm trying to see that on wednesday so i'm excited about that um and Abe, uh, anything else that you saw of note? Uh, not really. I just watched whatever. Abe, you froze. Guys about Malignant last week? Oh, there you came oh. back. You came back. Repeat Malignant. that one more time. <laughs> Abe, repeat that one more time. Yeah, Malignant. Did you guys? Did you guys think about Malignant last week? No, no we week. didn't. Yes. Let's, which I was going to bring up, and I was That's asking you That's why you asked me, right? Correct. I was asking you because I was prompting you, you saw Malignant. Oh, God. I want to have a quick discussion, very quick discussion on Malignant. Um, okay, so I will quickly say I, in fact, saw That was one of the two movies that I saw on vacation. One was um, uh, uh, Kate, which I also saw. Uh, I thought it was fine. I, I, nothing spectacular. Great action. Um, some great visuals. Uh, Kate, you know. I was about to say Kate Winslet. That's not Kate Winslet. <laughs> oh no, what's her name? Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Thank you. I just don't, I'm totally blanked on her name. Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I want to see great. Kate Winslet in an action movie now. Yeah, I kind of do too. <laughs> We're a one show podcast. We didn't even talk about the Emmys last night. I know it's TV, but. I, I didn't watch it because I, I wasn't. I didn't watch the Emmys either. Kate Winslet won for Mayor of Easttown. Yeah. She did. She did. This is true. Um, but I saw that Kate was good. I know why I was thinking Kate. Kate Winslet. That's why I was thinking Kate. But it was good. I don't. I don't think it was anything special. I've seen better action films, uh, especially on Netflix before. Like even Gunpowder Milkshake. I like Gunpowder Milkshake more than I did Kate. Not, not that it's comparing the two, but they both have similar sensibilities when it comes to you know action. L- less about the quirkiness of it. But Kate's way more serious in tone than Gunpowder Milkshake. Um, but I like the creativity of Gunpowder Milkshake better for our comparing the two. But I saw malignant and malignant i know dan doesn't like it abe likes it and i like it too because it is utterly bonkers i've heard that word thrown around and malignant is in fact utterly bonkers dan i want to hear your thoughts before me and uh abe gush on this movie uh again i'm gushing not because it's a good movie i think it's fine but i love just how utterly bonkers as i've used that term before the movie truly is but dan why did it not work for you it just was a convoluted mess um it wasn't utterly bonkers it was a convoluted mess it doesn't make any sense and we didn't get a third conjuring movie from james wan about a werewolf because he was doing this piece of crap and i'm upset about that because i would have rather seen a third conjuring movie with the warren involving a werewolf somehow which is what James Con- James Wan was supposed to be doing instead of Malaysia. And this was the absolute garbage, as far as I'm concerned. I would have rather seen another Aquaman instead of this 
piece of junk. Well, he will be suing Aquaman, too. And I think this was something that he wanted to do because I think his wife came up with the idea and he wanted to see this through. And the fact of pure... See, what worked for me for this was this level of camp. The movie never took itself too seriously, I feel like. There was always this level of the way that the camera played with kind of uh, these overtly Jerry James Wanzian shots of how it's very kinetic, very out there. And the dialogue was kind of stilted. The music cues were off and just the ridiculous nature of it. Um, I didn't know that he was going to be thrown about a werewolf. I was unaware of that. I would have loved to have seen that. But at the end of the day, I guess the entire idea of what this is, the visuals specifically, the the, the Gabriel as, as, a, as a horror villain, I absolutely love that twist. Like, oh, I didn't see that coming at all. Dan is not a mile away. You did? I guess yeah. for me, I saw this. I won't spoil it here, but I did not see it coming. Although, in retrospect, I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Um, but Abe, why did you like Malignant? Manny, Manny, how come it's not a good movie? Because it's the, 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 the pacing is off, the screenplay is not great, it rushes through things, and the dialogue is kind of corny, and the actors aren't necessarily that great, but I love it. <laughs> Look, Manny, this is my, well, if you call the father... This is my third favorite film of the year, and I watched 41. Just what? Behind, well, what's number one? What's number one? Oh, it's Mitchell Blush of the Machines. The oh. Made one that came out in April. That's number one. If you don't call the father. But this, this I, I just love a movie. I just like to be, like, the main thing I want to be in the, any film. I don't care if it's an art house film. I don't care if it's the biggest blockbuster ever. I just want to be entertained. And I was entertained. I don't want movies to change my like. No, every movie has to change my life and the way I think, and I have to be philosophical about it. But I was, I was having a ton of blast at *Malignant*. I was saying at uh, the middle when I was cut off that I was wondering when is this gonna pick up? Sure, everything looks fine. I think the premise is good, but when it starts picking up, when you start, uh, I guess this is when the are, are we talking spoilers? Uh, no. I have not seen it. Yes. I don't even know when it's coming out here yet. Well, when when things start picking up, when there's, you know, they're still investigating what's happening, I guess, where, like, I guess, like, 45, 50 minutes in the movie, that's, like, when I say, okay, I was just, I mean, my face, but I was just wide, wide mouth open, I, I literally just amazed by it. Because I love movies that look good, and this movie looks good. Like I think we rarely see movies that look good anymore, especially when they're shot on digital and you know, these great directors. Like movies tend to not look that good right now. I don't know why. Mainly blockbusters. Hashtag Marvel movie. You have to Marvel movies. You have to do better. What your cinema talk? I don't. I love me. You have to do better. And just want to understand that. Don't get. What I was gonna say. Shang Chi cinematography is really good. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen this, but I was, I'm hyped from the trailer. I can't actually come and see this. It's coming from someone who really loves the Saw movies. Um, a crazy horror movie is something I expect from James Wan, and anything can't be worse than the crap Conjuring movies. So I'm sorry, they, they're just not good. Wait, hold on. Like, <laughs> are you including one and two? Those are the two country movies I'm talking about. I've not seen the rest of the spinoffs. <gasps> the first country movie is amazing, Malcolm. I think I, th- I think you have to you have to watch women for to understand how bad something is. Because when you go watch the gallows, just because you want to watch the gallows, it's like when you say, "Okay, somebody's doing a good job." Gallows, have you guys good. watched the gallows? Not good. Not good. Oh, I've no, never no, heard yeah. of the gallows. <laughs> That's why you have to go. Watch Watch that kind of shit to appreciate the other stuff. Good point. Uh, hey, well, good point. Eh? Some people just, I guess, don't understand. They just don't, uh, just don't care for the genre of horror. And I get it. I know people who do not care for horror as a genre. I love horror. Remember, I love. Horror. I mean, I, I, I love her. I still don't like the country oh. movies. Interesting. I we'll have to have a discussion about that. Horror. Like Halloween Kills is coming out in a couple weeks, and I can't wait. This is true. Well, we'll talk about that later because we got to get. We got we got to get a move on, um, but we've talked about that. But now we're going to talk about some trailers that have 
released this past week and a little bit of into the previous week before that. Last trailer we talked about was Belfast being released, and that looked like fan Mwah. chef's kiss. Fantastic. We love it. Kenneth Branagh maybe coming back into some sort of uh, form and a passion project. And what happens with passion projects most of the time? They get good reviews if they're good movies. There you go. But we talked about Belfast as a trailer. The first trailer that I want to, to, to highlight is the follow-up film to a director that has recently won an Oscar for picture and directing. And this is a film that is a remake. Of, well, actually, I think it's an adaption of the book. But uh, it is, I guess, kind of considered a remake of like the original, I believe, 1940s film. Uh, original horror film, Nightmare Alley. Where did it come from? It got by the same lust and threat that got us all walking on this earth, but gone wrong somehow in maternal wounds. Not fit for living. Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley is coming out this year. I believe it's uh, December, don't quote me, 17th. I could be incorrect. I'm just going to say December because I, I don't know. I, I, no, I, th I think it goes white. 17 and i think it opens limited like on the first so i think you're cool. okay well then perfect nightmare alley released its first trailer and i was so hyped for this because the visuals on this are utterly bananas it is breathtaking at the same time while being utterly kind of creepy well not being a full-on horror film this looks unsettling and is something that kind of gave me um uh, like a, a nice mixture of shape of water and pan's labyrinth um, something along those lines of his of his wheelhouse. William Defoe, uh, his voice over the entire time was terrifying. I love the cast that we've assembled and gathered together. Uh, the production design is something to like die for. The entire time, my skin was kind of crawling, thinking at that very shot when Bradley Cooper, I believe that's Bradley Cooper as the detective, running away, uh, and that in the quote unquote nightmare alley. That was a great shot, but there's this is like a this is a treasure trove of fantastic shots. I need to see who he's partnered with um, for the cinematography because it is again a visually sh uh, sharp and um, rich, um, and it has a really nice color palette that kind of screams this is terrifying, and I'm gonna love every second of it. Um, but uh, Malcolm, what did you think of Nightmare Alley? Um, I'm hoping the movie is better than what the trailer looked like. The trailer <gasps> looked fine. Um, the, like it, there wasn't really much there that I haven't seen in other movies of that like before. Um, I mean, I've got to wait a little bit longer to see this. It doesn't come out for me until twenty for January next year. So, um, oh, well, that's that's unfortunate. The fact that they're waiting that long. Oh, move, some movies always get released later um, over here than they do um, for you guys. It's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. Why didn't it do it for you personally? I mean, it did it. I mean, it looked like um, other movies that I've seen before. It just didn't look anything new. Um, it just looked like your usual Guillermo del Toro. And... Well, for you personally, how big of a fan are you of Guillermo del Toro? I've seen a few movies of his. Mm hmm. <laughs> Are you a fan of what he does, usually? I mean, I'm a fan of his visuals. I mean, um, like aside from um, some of the moves like Pan's Labyrinth, I thought it was fine. Um, it's, I mean, look, for me, Pan's Labyrinth suffered the way like, a lot of horror movies suffer for me. It's like, I don't... I, I, I mean, the visuals are fine, but I just got lost in the story because just because... I couldn't keep up with the subtitles, and I'm just... When it comes to subtitle moves, mm. I'm not a fan of them in general, so... No, I remember us having this conversation. I Yeah, no, I understand. Again, the sometimes the one-inch barrier, as uh, Bong Joon-ho said, is not for everybody. Breakthrough. So I understand that completely. But Abe, did the trailer for Nightmare Alley excite you, and are you a Guillermo del Toro fan, sir? My name I will be called a trailer if I'm not a fan of Guillermo del Toro. Good. Weapon. All right. Well, <laughs> do you want me to leave it at that? Do you want to expand upon that? <laughs> no, like, like uh, the trailer was fine. I just think it was a teaser. Like, it's not showing much. Yes. And it, you know, it's a 
It's kind of sounds so bad, but the classic Guillermo del Toro visuals. It's what you respect. Like, are you expecting something else? Like, the guy is good. It's good at directing that. Like, he takes care of every single detail visually. Uh, but the cast, like, you know, I've been excited about this film for like two years now, which I think the excitement has lowered because it was pushed because I think it was supposed to come out last year. Yeah. Because they were shooting. Yeah, he started shooting this movie like on early March of last year. So I think he has to stop production till the end of next year. Because I remember mm-hmm. seeing that text was a leak. And I mean, it has Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett is probably one of the top three actresses working today. She's a power of an actress. Yes. And that's Bradley Cooper in it. Well, Bradley Cooper is my guy. I think he should, he should have won the Oscar for a spice point. Uh, but, but I'm excited about it. Like, I don't think it's so much. I think we're going to get a second trailer. Which is going to play so yeah. much. But like, uh, William Dafoe. That creeped me out. I have to say. Like, his voice creeps me out. He has this way of talking sometimes. Which it's kind of weird. But I'm, I'm excited about it. Listen, even the way that he talked about it, talked in the lighthouse terrified me. He just has this way of speaking that is unsettling. Not like even when he was in the Green Goblin, when he played Green Goblin, that laugh is terrifying. Look at his face when he's in the mirror in Spider Man. That's just unsettling. Uh, but Dan, were you unsettled by Willem Dafoe? And more importantly, did you like the teaser? Excuse me, it's not a trailer, it is a teaser. No, I'll tell you what, I thought they did perfect with this trailer because. It brings you into the world that Guillermo del Toro is trying to create perfectly. It it keeps you in the dark on a lot of things, no pun intended. But uh, obviously, anything with Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett, directed by Guillermo del Toro, I'm in. I wasn't the big look. I was all in on uh, Crimson Peak. When I watched it, I wasn't in on it anymore. But I'm going to see everything Guillermo del Toro does because. I am a fan, and I'm unlike Malcolm. I absolutely love Pan's Labyrinth, and it was one of my top favorite movies of that decade. I think I had a three or four on my top ten favorite movies of the decade. That that that, that decade when I put up my top ten list. It is. Uh, he's a great director. He's hit and miss like a lot of directors are. He's hit and miss. Sometimes I like his stuff. Sometimes I don't. You know. So um, yeah, this looks really good. It, it gives you just enough to real. Where you like, you're all in on it. I like the, I like the the fact that it takes place in the past, so you get a lot of that kind of uh, production value and stuff like that. That's going to be fun. But no, yeah. I, I I agree. What I was going to add, what I was going to add is like, um, um, like for uh, Guillermo, like he has such an attention to detail. Like in Shape of Water, which I'm I'm not the biggest fan of Shape of Water, just from like you know, not that it's a bad film. It's just not, you know, not my favorite of his that he has done in the past, but it is visually something that I'm just like, yes, give me more. I want it because he, he, he is one of those directors that has a very distinctive style, a very visual distinctive style. It's almost kind of like Tim Burton, um, like in the way that it's that he has this his style is so, so distinct. Even if you look at Crimson Peak, which, again, not the best film in the world, but from visual standpoint, oh, my Lord almighty, like, yeah. it, it just grabs you. Um, and the trailer, just the trailer alone did that. It gave me that same feeling. It evoked those same feelings. And the thing is, too, with Manny, is he does a lot of this. He write, he, he draws a lot of this. All this stuff, he puts in notebooks and stuff. He, so he's building sets and, and doing these things he's doing based off of his own drawings. So he really puts a lot of himself into everything he does, which I mean, I'm not saying that every director doesn't do that, but if you you see his production notes on some of his movies, they're amazing, well, they're incredible. But no, this I think this uh, to wrap up this discussion for Nightmare Alley, uh, I'm su- I'm super looking forward to this. But um, again, he's a very hit or miss director. So far, Pan's Labyrinth and Shape of Water are the two only films that have hit with the Academy. Um, do you think that Nightmare Alley will join those ranks as a movie that is well regarded? Or will this be more like a, hey, this is good, not our cup of tea, but we gave it a lot of the tech below the line things? Yeah, I definitely uh, I believe uh, this is going to be one that's going to hit with the Academy. They want to put different movies in that 10, Manning, and this looks different than anything right. we're going to see the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. And if it's if it's a if it's a good film, as in like you know, um, 
like obviously a well-regarded film. I think tech tech wise, like production, cinematography, they're gonna be in the discussion regardless just from looking at this, but looking at maybe possible director of picture. Uh, again, we need more from the acting. Maybe Willem Dafoe in supporting. He had a really juicy monologue, and who doesn't love a good monologue? Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think Sessler will be putting this film unlimited and then white with the stars on it if it wasn't a good movie or something they're confident in. And one, I think I, Yeah, I think I think Sessler is pretty one of the well. I think it's the best one campaigning for the film. It won Berman the best picture. Uh, what else? What else was the one lately? Was, I mean, they won this the Table of Water. Table of Water won Best Picture. So they, they're they good campaigning. And and I think it's probably their biggest horse, horse in the race. Like, you I'm think so? Yeah. You no, well, I think so. Like, uh, at the top of my head, I'm trying to remember Dude's some several horse in the race. But, uh, but, but it's not such like it's, uh, that's Warner Bros. That's like, oh, you see, it's such like Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, I yes. thought you said yes. the biggest horse in the race. No, no, the big horse in the race. Like for the, for, you know, the studios usually choose choose one. Yes. So they can put well, the most. Well, Isaac Hayes is searchlight. So. Yeah, but that's that's probably not gonna go to picture. That's probably just gonna be actors, you know. Yeah. yeah. I finally hired with the reviews and everything. I haven't watched it, so I cannot talk about it. But yeah. for the reviews I've seen and what people have been commenting, like, probably that's maybe what that's, the campaign they're doing. Maybe that's why Abe they pushed. Last goal wins. They want. They didn't want last goal wins and Nightmare Alley to be vying for a lot of the similar things. And they're like, "Oh, That's let's true. put last goal wins next year. We could push that to do some things the following yep. year." Yep. Because let's go. It's it's next goal. Well, I don't remember that 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 was shot like a while ago. I remember knowing that it was coming out since. Oh yeah, it's no like the, yeah, it was. Forever. Yeah, like in 2019, I remember that movie was filming. It's no leak. I think it's the next goal wins. Work. Last goal wins. Yeah, I don't. I don't one of the goals. Anyway. I think the TV. next one wins because the, well, the last one can be win it when we tie it. It'll be the last one to win <laughs> next time. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Malcolm. I was about to say my um my friend Taika is still working on it. Okay, let us know. You know, <laughs> let, let us know, Peter Peter Jackson. Let us know what your fellow New Zealander says about it. Um. But that is Nightmare Alley, and now we're going to move on to another one, and that is a movie that we've all seen and grown up to love. Um, well, not this movie. It's a remake of that movie, but regardless, it is the official trailer to West Side Story. Life matters even more than love. Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. It's weird saying that now, like Robert Wise. Um, wait, Robert Wise? Who's the other person who did with Robert Wise? I can't remember who directed it along with him. I'm blanking. Well, we'll find out later. I'll, I'll, I'll add it in post. We'll fix it in post, as they say. But Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. I want to make a quick comment before uh, Abe, I ask you. Jerome Robbins. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome Robbins and Robert Wise. There we go. For the two directors of West Side Story, Oscar winning directors. Two questions for you, Abe, I'm going to ask. But first, did anyone. I want to make a note that Rachel Zegler, um, uh, Ziegler, I'm still not sure yet. She was front and center in this. And if you look at a comparison to the last trailer, which had a little more Ansel Elgort, this one almost was exclusively highlighting her and her performance. They're definitely backtracking a little more and being like, hey, Ansel Elgort's in this, and we know he's had some accusations in the past. So we're going to highlight this newcomer who is non-problematic and actually supposed to be really good in the role. Um, but did any that, but Abe, did you notice that? Uh, did you notice that push of her in the trailer? And did you enjoy the trailer? I noticed the absence. Is that a word? The absence? Uh, the, absence the absence. Of Ansel the absence. Edward. The absence of Ansel Edward in the trailer. I know they're going to push it. Like in the trailer, I mean, it's Steven Spielberg. Uh, you know it's going to be a, probably a fine movie. At least fine. But I find it so uninteresting that he's remaking West Side Story and he's putting it in these dark alleys with his Spielberg style, which is fine. It has worked with him. But you know, these smoky lights and everything. 
Smokey likes a correct turn map. You know the Smokey background? Yes. Because he, he likes to use fog. I mean, I mean some characteristic from... But I, I just be sure if I don't find it interesting. Like, you're doing what's history. Put color in it. Have you watched the film? I mean, I bet he has watched the film more, way more many times than I have. But, like, <laughs> something cool about what's history is the, the color palette and everything that's happening. But I, I think... I, I haven't watched the film. I'm just speculating. But I think it was a missed opportunity. Like, you can set it in the present and move it in another, to another city or something about it. Like, be more interesting. Man. Just not remake the first one. I think they're going to change stuff. They probably will because oh, they have yeah. to adapt it to the current audience. But, like, I think the movie's going to be fine. Like, it's still in Spielberg. I have confidence in it. That guy, that guy can direct anything, like, with one hand and it's going to work anyway. <laughs> you have done it. Well, like, I just find it uninteresting. Like, I'm I'm not interested in the film. Yeah, I want to yeah. watch it because I watch everything. Well, <laughs> it's Steven Spielberg, it's something yeah. I, yeah. Well, that, I just, the trailer didn't grab me that much. Yeah, and even, like, his m- movies that are not as critically acclaimed or as, I guess, timeless. Uh, you look at movies like recently, just like Bridge of Spies and The Post, two movies that people aren't going to be like, wow, this is in the terms of Schindler's List or Saving Private Ryan. They're not, but they're not bad films. And I think we're going to look at a film that's kind of like, Steven, why did you do this? Uh, so, Dan, are you going to ask Steven why did he do this, and did you like the trailer? I mean, the trailer was okay. I, I'll be honest. Isn't it the, like the second trailer? Because there was another trailer, and I kind of was more interested in the la- the first trailer or the teaser or whatever it was that came out, I don't know how many months ago. A little bit ago. I actually kind of like that one better than I did this one. I mean, obviously, I'm going to see the movie. I'm, I, you know, Steven Spielberg is my second favorite director of all time. I probably own, you know, every movie of his on either DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K. So, um, and I, and, and I even had probably tw- close to twenty something of digital codes in his. So, I love Steven Spielberg's movies, and I love musicals. This is the year of the musical. Is this going to be the creme de la creme of the musicals? What all the other musicals came out, and now. West Side Story is going to come out and it's going to blow all the other musicals away. We'll see. You know, Steven Spielberg has been hit and miss over the last 10 or 15 years. He hasn't yeah. been, it wasn't like we're boom, boom, boom. He was hitting home run over, home run over, home run. This is in the 90s. Yeah. You know, so we'll see. Like I said, it's got a lot of good things in it. Where okay, two things. One, what was the last universally acclaimed film that Spielberg did where people were like, This is a fantastic film or Lincoln. we absolutely love it? Lincoln. Yeah. Was it Lincoln? Really? Twenty twelve? Jeez Louise. Yeah. I mean, Ready Player One, the book was better than the movie. So if you really want to get a better version of Re- Ready Player One, read the book. Uh, Spielberg did as much as he could possibly do with that movie, considering his the restraints he was under. But if you really want to see how good, potentially good Ready Player One could have been, read the book. The, uh, the movie's better than the book. No, um, I, do, I, I do not. I do not like the Ready Player crazy. One. You're crazy. <gasps> People tell me that all the time. <laughs> I, I, I've learned to live with it. <laughs> Malcolm has lived with the fact that he's on the island of the island of Ready Player One. Well, maybe a large island. I'm not sure because I've never read the book myself. Um, but. Uh, for okay, one thing I find interesting is that yes, I question why he picked this movie, and I think we're still going to question that even as I sit my butt into the theater figuring out why did you do this? Because there are so many other films he could do, especially because this is a, this isn't a lesser known musical like The Umbrellas of um, oh, what's that one called? The Umbrellas of um, Shell Bore. Yeah, yeah, some, some, something like that. Yeah, um, Rose of Shell Bore. It's a French film. Yeah, exactly. Like b- people really don't know much about that. The first time I heard about it was when it was in, in comparison to La La Land, when people brought comparisons to that. You could redo something like that into an American adaptation. Why do something that is on the par of like Sound of Music um, to like singing classic in Roger and Hammerstein's? Yes, yeah, Singing in the like, Rain. Something. What? It doesn't make sense. It's because yeah. it, it, your people are going to compare this, especially Abe's right. You're not doing a lot of changing. And while this this trailer was fine, I'm excited to see what more they give um, the character of Maria to do because I think she, I think what's just funny because I think those two are the most like uh, Tony and Maria are very in the in the original are probably the weakest characters just because they don't really have as much to do in comparison to the supporting characters in my opinion. Um, but maybe they beef them up in a way where it's going to have a little bit, a little bit you know more to do. But I could be very wrong. Um, 
so uh but i i'm 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 excited regardless um malcolm what about for you what does this trailer do for you if anything um i mean i'm i'm just as excited as i was since the first trailer um i mean as someone who only just saw the um properly saw west side saw for the first time last year um mm. and this looks really interesting um and like and this is a passion project of Spielberg, so he's going to put all his heart and soul into this movie. So I mean, um, and that's like he clearly chose to do this for a reason. And but um, I mean, I don't think this is going to be blow all the other musicals away because it started off when, when it comes to musicals in the Heights is really going to be hard to beat. Um, and so I mean, it's. Um, so it's going to be one of those ones that we could have a lot of musicals in here. If this is really good, this will get Oscar buzz too. And um, we could see, because um, I think, I don't think we've had a lot of musicals in the same categories in, um, in the Oscars before. So this could be be like history making to have more, uh, multiple uh, musicals in like Best Picture and that. So. No, we could because we're still we still haven't seen uh, Tick Tick Boom. Um, uh, Dear, well, Dear Evan, Dear Evan Hansen, Hansen. That, that's probably not gonna. After the reviews from, that's probably Annette, not gonna do it. I'll tell you guys, if you see a net, oh, I love you. Oh, I only made it halfway through a net because I got bored and hated it. <laughs> wow, is that wild or what? That is a that is a that is a that's a movie. That was all I'm gonna say. That is indeed a movie. That is another foreign foreign language uh, musical. Uh, in the mix somewhere and i just can't think of what it is right now i heard about it coming out of a couple of the festivals I mean, you never know we could see the new cinderella in the mix no Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Don't, don't even joke about that malcolm i'm avoiding that like the plague me too. it keeps it keeps telling it keeps showing me clips on twitter and tiktok and i'm like no go away i don't want to see you I, i'm i'm avoiding you for a reason i don't want this maybe if you, maybe if you actually watch it those clips will go mm. away Sorry, Jeff Bezos. I'm not watching this on Prime. You can't make me. I already saw a net, and look what happened to that, or half half of a net anyway. Um, yeah. So that is West Side Story. I think we're excited because it's Spielberg. And you're right, Malcolm. It is a passion project, and he's going to put his heart and soul into it. I don't deny that. He would not pick this arbitrarily because, hey, I should remake West Side Story. He probably grew up watching it and was like, hey, maybe I could do this and provide something different. Maybe. Hopefully, we'll see. I'm optimistic. I'm excited but I'm trepidatious. Um, I'm not having it. I don't have it in my, in the top 10 of my best picture predictions, which everyone get ready for those. Cause we'll be doing those very soon. Um, I know spoiler alert for these guys over here. I'm dropping this bomb on them. Uh, Cause next week we're going to have our first best picture predictions. I'm saying this right now out of them live. We're going to get that situated. So get your top 10 cause we can do 10 now. Best picture predictions. For picture we're gonna get that out here and into the ether but we're gonna move right along because again we have about uh 40 minutes left so next trailer we have is one that is another very controversial director well more recently controversial this is a man who did anchorman which i adore but he also did some recent films in the more dramatic side that got some uh shall we say some pushback and i'm curious about y'all's opinion were on those two films but this is one that looks like it's going to be a little more comedic than the prior two and that is don't look up you're here now you're here now you're here now you're here now you're now your breathing is stressing me out this will affect the entire planet i know but it's like so stressful Netflix's, or Adam McKay's Don't Look Up, is coming out this year, and it is basically starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Meryl Streep, Jonah Hill, a real cavalcade of characters ranging all the way from, um, oh, what's his name, uh, Morgan, um, uh, the, he was in Daredevil, he was the guy in Daredevil and all those, uh, uh, movies. It's such a job uh, for you? No, no, he was this, well, he was, uh, he was in, no. Charlie Cox? No, he's a, he, he was, his name was Morgan something, I can't remember his name, Paul Morgan? Um, but he literally was in every single one as a bit character. Um, he was with the crook Twitch. What's not a Twitch. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, look I... it up. Someone look it up. Um, 
but he's in there too. Uh, Peter Morgan, not Peter Morgan. That's the director for um, the crown. <laughs> um, but yeah. And then also, you know, uh, you have uh, Academy Award winner. Um, uh, who uh, what was the guy who won for uh, the Bridge of Spies? He's in here as well. Oh, uh, Mark Rylance. Mike Rylance. Mike Rylance, who looks really weird in these weird fake teeth that he has. Uh, this trailer looks really comedic. A lot more comedic than his prior to, I will say. So we could, in fact, be looking at a very... It, it's it's going to be it's going to be satire. It is, this is 100% satire, even more so than what Vice was, which to me had a little more of a dramatic flair while still being, you know, satire. So um, uh, we started with Dave. So Dan, what was your... What are your thoughts on... You know, quickly your thoughts on Vice and the Big Short. Your your feelings toward those and Adam McKay's dramatic side in comparison to your excitement for this trailer and Don't Look Up. I'll tell you what, Adam McKay has been amazing with uh, the Big Short and Vice. Both phenomenal films. Both great casting. Great. A lot of Oscar nominations. I'll tell you what, a movie about a meteor that's about to destroy the Earth, and you find humor in it and and that sort of stuff. You, you 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 deserve a lot of credit, Adam McKay. I give you a lot of credit, and this, you got Leonardo DiCaprio in here having freaking hamming it up in here. I tell you, I, I'm hoping this is good because we need a good comedy. I'm, I'm, Jesus, man, we cannot for the life of us figure out how to do good comedy anymore in this country. Adam McKay has figured out how to do it in a tongue-in-cheek, like kind of serious way, but it's funny, you know, you know making fun of uh, Dick Cheney, you know, making, you know, doing things like that, making fun of our collapse of our housing uh, department and all this stuff in, in, in our stock market, you know. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I, I'll tell you what, we need something that we can laugh at, even though it's the destruction of the planet by a giant E or potentially. We'll see. We'll see what happens at the very end of the movie and if we all get destroyed. Uh, Malcolm, what are your thoughts on Vice, The Big Short, Adam McKay as a dramatic director, and then your thoughts on this trailer? I mean, I love Adam McKay as director, full stop. Um, like, there's really nothing that he's done that I've not liked. Um, and Don't Look Up just looks bonkers and crazy, and I'm in for it. <laughs> um, I mean, I joked on um, a different show when I was talking about these trailers, but also talking about Moonfall. Um, I was joking that oh, about yeah. what are, um, what are the odds this could be end up being a prequel to Roland Emmerich's Moonfall? <laughs> that'd be a that'd be a change of pace. I can tell you that. Uh, so you know uh, the trailer remind me of the Wolf of Wall Street trailers. It's kind of like that. Yeah, uh, it is a little bit. And, and I will, not, not because not because of, not because of the topic. Like I don't care. We'll go on that one day. I don't care if it's a mess, a meteor, you die alone in your house. I truly don't care. Uh, but <laughs> it's just something that power that Netflix gives to this to the director something scares me because they usually <laughs> do not see. I don't think Netflix has had a, like a savvy producer. Like with, especially with comedies, like I'm not a fan of most Netflix comedies they come out. Have you watched that Kissing Booth? No. Mm -hmm. Like to, to all the boys a lot before, like the first one was good because that was made at Sonny's and they bought it. But the two others was, well, 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 well. yeah, like unless, unless they buy it, they, they know because they, the, those films were produced by somebody else. Well, this scares me because Adam McKay is funny and I love all his work. Like, I, I thought Vice was fantastic and I love that picture even more. But but it scares me a little bit. I don't know why. But I guess if you have such a great cast, like, how can you mishandle that? Like, you have a great cast that it's going to be good. Like, you know, the act I mean, you have Meryl Streep, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lauren, Jonah Hill, and I found more people that I can know. Is Kate Blanchett in here? No, Kate Blanchett is not in here. She is. Is she in there? She's, okay. she's basically a news reporter along with um, yeah. uh, Tyler Perry. Yeah, and satire is probably my favorite genre of everything, like like in, in literature. Like, satire is my jam, and, and well, in film too, but it's rarely that. Like, most of the satire we get right now is in, in animation. We really get films that come in, in, you know, they come in live action, like good satire, at least. But what it scares me a little bit, I, I'm going to watch it, you know. December 24th, when I wake up, 
for having to do something for Christmas that day. I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna watch. Well, probably not gonna sleep that day, I'm just gonna watch it. <laughs> but, well, that's scary, but it, it does look interesting. And this Leonardo DiCaprio is my favorite actor, and so I think I at least, I, I at least have that going for me. Well, what I. Okay, first off, it is Rob Morgan. He was um, uh, uh, in. He was Turk. You guys remember Turk Barrett? Remember him at all from uh, a Luke Cage, Daredevil, um, The Defenders, The Punisher, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. He was in a bit character. Look up Turk Barrett. He uh-huh. was a bit character, and he is in this. And I'm excited he's getting a big role. Uh, like he's like third build or something. But this is just a cavalcade of riches when it comes to character. And I know this is going to be a full on. Um, satire, and I'm here for that. I oh, I don't that guy. Yeah, oh, Turk. Actor. Yeah. Rob Morgan. <clears throat> Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, he was the guy that designed the equipment. Sorry for your term. No, you're fine. Um, fine. what I was gonna say is that I I think Adam McKay. Mm, I think the, I like The Big Short a lot. Um, I. That sound. Somebody's spraying something. Are you spraying something, Abe? What? <laughs> oh, what up? I need to be doing something. I'm sorry. I just have an anxiety for things. It's okay. Why I'm always grabbing stuff. It's not because well, of you. Okay, there was, I heard it. I want to start with your paper. Okay. Um, but no, what I was going to say is that. Adam McKay is a, char- is a character character. He's not a character. He's a director. He's a director who's hit or miss for me. Um, I think The Big Short was a hit. I think Vice was a miss. Not from an acting standpoint. And I think the editing was in, was really kind of ridiculous. And while it didn't work all the all the way, it's just kind of bonkers and, and really fun. I think it's a very persnickety and uptight film that's kind of like, haha, look at me. We're making fun of this particular character, which I think we all should make fun of. But it's just it just didn't it just didn't really work for me. This one though looks like it's gonna be a satire that I don't know. I love DiCaprio when he does comedy, and the clo- and when he did the wolf, when he did like a um, Wolf of Wall Street, when he's done, um, uh, 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 when he's done Django Unchained, and uh, what's the last other movie that he did recently? Um, not Revenant. There's one. Bef- there's one that was like Hollywood. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Yes. To me, I love him when he does that. I love it, and I can't wait to see because him hyperventilating in the bathroom at the very beginning just seems kind of really. He's great at physical comedy, and I want him to do more of that. And Adam McKay, while he's not a slapstick comedy, I think this is going to be a great, a great use of of DiCaprio's skill. And hopefully, we'll see more of Lawrence because she hasn't done much since Mother or Mother. I can't forget that. Mother. Point. Mother. <laughs> oh yeah, Passengers. Yeah, but I think Mother might have been the last one. I can't remember. Mother. Um. Yeah, no, no I, I was the last one. It was but, the last one. Well, technically, wasn't Dark Phoenix the last one? <laughs> no, no, oh, no. I forgot about that film. You keep reminding us of you guys keep reminding us of all these bad things. Oh my goodness, can't remember. I, can't... I like that movie. Dark Phoenix. I mean, it wasn't. It's not the worst of the X Men uh, I mean, franchise. That's for sure. I mean, that's it's not true. a watchable. It's like. Uh... Origins exist, but I mean, I anyway, I have to give credit. I, I have to give credit to Simon Kickle for that one. Visually, it's a list good. Like it looks pretty. Okay, well, Maybe yeah, I'm, I'm excited for. Good. I'm excited for Don't Look Up. Uh, I this could be a miss. I could see this because he's written, directed, and produced it, so they get him full creative control. And Netflix is not one to be like, here, let's pull this back. Hopefully, if he's rain, if he's rain, not reined in, you know. He'll be able to he'll be able to have something good come from it. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence was was in three movies since Mother. There was um, Red Sparrow, oh, yeah. and um, Love and Tosha, which is a documentary. No idea what that was. Wow. Um, Red Sparrow, know. boy, what a mess! But it could have been so good. Could have been so so good. Sadly. All right. Next movie we have is. Um, it's a little more of an independent feature. It's a film that kind of got some great reviews out of TIFF. And this is a film that kind of, uh, from what I've heard, it's a movie that isn't necessarily all that it seems upon the surface. It is based upon a play that was on Broadway, uh, or might have been off-Broadway. I can't remember exactly. 
Um, but this movie is in fact called The Humans. So are you balancing a job with all your studies? The main reason I'm not done with school yet is because I was depressed for a bit. I'm fine now. In our family, we don't have that kind of depression. Dad. <laughs> Whoa, come back to Earth. Oh, sorry. No, we just have a lot of stoic sadness. The Humans uh, is a drama film uh, directed by uh, Stephen Karam. Uh, this is a directorial debut in a one-act play of the same name. starring Richard Jenkins, uh, Amy Schumer, Beanie Feldstein, and everyone's favorite, Stephen Yoon. Um, who doesn't love Stephen Yoon? Uh, I, this trailer was something that looks really, really odd. It's, uh, it's, it is a, it is a, um, it's a Tony winning play. So there is like merits, uh, behind, behind it. And the fact that there is, it's, it is relatively, it is good. Um, and it's gotten really good reviews, but people who have heard this and seen the trailer say it is not indicative of the claustrophobia and the sheer kind of almost horror like elements that exist within this movie. Um, I'm excited to see this. Um, at the end of the day, I've heard a lot of stuff from Richard Jenkins. And while this couldn't be, this may not be a big player outside of maybe screenplay and Jenkins, but that's all I've really heard. But it's something to keep an eye on. And the humans, because it's A24, they could continue to push that in order to get something for Jenkins and his second nomination since Shape of Water. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so Malcolm, for you, love the sunglasses, by the way. He put on some great dollar sunglasses. Um, what are your thoughts on the humans in this trailer? Um, my thoughts are very simple. I just ha didn't get around to watching this trailer yet. <laughs> Well, there we go. That is a very simple uh, response. Um, so, uh, Abe, for you, tell me, what are your thoughts on the humans? Uh, it looks interesting. I think it seems, well, I saw a tweet that it says it's more like a horror movie than it is uh, anything we were expecting. I think they should call it the almost sapiens. S, you know, <laughs> the humans, the human, the almost sapiens. No. The, uh, oh, the homo sapiens. <laughs> the sapiens. The sapiens. <laughs> what, what, um, I mean, sapiens is a species, so yes, it be look, we know that is. That, no, there like, you go. Uh, I, I think it looks it looks pretty interesting. I don't have any words because I don't think I'll try so much. I think it's still in June. I think after Minari, I think we all want to see what he's winning because he's really, <laughs> Oh, yeah. He, he has all the potential. I mean, he has the potential. He's, he's a great actor. There's no, no potential there. It's already a full power. I don't know how you call it. I don't remember my physics classes. <laughs> he has reached, he has reached, he, he has reached his, uh, uh, not peak yet, but he's reached to a point where it's just like, wow, this this guy is really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, right. All right. You know, start noticing him. Like, oh, who's this actor? Oh, he's always been good. What in a, his IMDb? Oh, he was this guy in this movie, which I watch, and I don't remember who he was. He's a character actor for the most part. So well, that's what I think about him. Like, he, he's in those backgrounds, and I think if he's getting great, uh, great, uh, great, uh, boss from the festival, I think that's great. I think he, I, I, who did he lose to in 2017? Was it Sam Rockwell? No, right? Oh yes, I think it, I think it was. But I think Shape of Water and Three Billboards was the same yes, year. Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah, I like what you think. Good pull. But... Yeah, it was underrated performance. Yeah, but I, I I'm excited to watch it. Uh, I don't know when I want to watch it because those things take time to get whatever I am. But but I'm excited. To watch it. And also, A twenty four. Like I think they're going more awards contendery. Like they're trying to be more. I don't know, commercial is the word, but you know, his films are usually like more uh, genre-like. Like, I haven't watched The Green Knight because I don't know why. If it's so, I can buy it right now. But uh, I think A24 is doing those plays of getting into a world conversation more. And and I think that's great because they have, they have, a, they, they have the money to do it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and I think and if The Humans is based on a play, then... Um, and we know the Oscars love movies based on plays because I mean, like yes. you had the father, you had the father last year. So I mean, there's probably a good chance, and there's precedent for it being a good big old favorite. So. Yeah, and if it's a Tony Award-winning play, look at August Osage County. You had Streep, and you brought in Roberts, which again, it's Streep, but Roberts was brought in in supporting. So again, you could have Richard Jenkins in supporting because 
I don't know what actually supporting looks like. We're going to have to start dig- doing some digging because uh, I don't know what the actual lineup could be for supporting actor because nothing really pops out right now, it seems. So look out for possible Richard Jenkins making a nomination. I'm not saying a win, but look out for a nomination because of what's been uh, said. But also, don't forget, a for every The Humans, they have Lamb. Lamb is also coming out, so don't forget about that. They also have their genre come on, films. Come on. Man, come on, and come, come on. on. Which, speaking of come on, come on, <laughs> it literally both coming by A24, come on, come on, is Mike Mills' next directorial feature starring Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, let me say, let me say something, Manning. Please. The Humans trailer really doesn't do what potential be, could be a great film. Just the trailer really doesn't show much. It shows a lot of people walking and talking in this house or this apartment or whatever you want to call it. I, I, I don't think this is not a good trailer. And if this movie is what people are saying it could be in the potential of how good this movie could be, they really dropped the ball. And, and they made a bad mm. trailer. But maybe it was for a reason. They didn't want to show their their hand. And so that's why they ended up with a bad trailer. But I'm still like like you guys. We're going to see the movie. And we'll make our judgment once we see it. Now, come on, come on. Now, that trailer was amazing. Black and white. You got Joaquin Phoenix is like this mentor guy for this kid. And that could be... Another Oscar nomination for Joaquin Phoenix. This this looks come on, come on. I really, really enjoyed it. They just like put that out there like this is the kind of movie we're trying to make. So you make your judgment if you want to go see it or not. The humans, it's kind of hidden a little. But we also had one night in Miami last year and the father. So we're getting a lot of these plays. And then this yes. year we had Dear Evan Hansen already that's coming out this week. So we're getting a lot of that plays into movies lately. Yeah, agreed. Um and uh, I think Come On, Come On, uh, Mike Mills has been nominated for an Oscar for, I believe it was, um, uh, 20th Century Woman. Mm-hmm. He was nominated yeah. for screenplay, correct? Yeah. Um, so he has some clout. Uh, if come On, Come On, because Come On, Come On could be what A24 pushes instead of the humans, because they're coming out the same month. Uh, they could push him for various things. Um, but this categories, could be... like you said, with Searchlight. Yeah, because there's no, I don't think, again... If you have a, a strong female performance um, or a strong male performance in, or supporting actor performance in The Humans, um, then you have a lead performance in this one or even screenplay. They could push either one of them whatever they feel like they want to. Um, but Malcolm, for you personally, what do you think of trailer Come On, Come On? Over the years, you will try to make sense of that happy, sad, full, always shifting life you're in. And when the time comes to return to your star, it may be hard to say goodbye to that strangely beautiful world. Damn this book. You're crying. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I've got to come on, come on and see it. Oh, well, <laughs> go see it. That was clever. I'll let that pass because that was really clever. Oh, I yeah. I really enjoyed the use of Claire de Lune. Claire de Lune is such an amazing like orchestral piece that was created um, by Debesi. And I think, especially with Joaquin Phoenix's voiceover, this is like a very 180 role from his Oscar winning performances in, in Joker. Uh, it's a very calm, really sweet guy. Um, and I'm really just looking forward to um, seeing what, what comes, what comes of this because it looks very touching, especially by the that book that he was reading. And I'm excited to see what transpires with um, come on, come on. Um, I'm not expecting like, too many things, but I'm I'm still looking forward to it. Abe, uh, what do you think of Come On, Come On? Come on, come on, Abe. Come on, answer this. Abe? Abe? Oh, Abe. sorry. It's because I lost you for a little bit, but I, I, I can hear you now. Oh. Uh, come on, come on. Let me rephrase uh, that again. Wait. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me key you up. So, so Abe, wait. Mm. So, Abe, tell me a little bit about, you know, what's your thoughts on Come On, Come On? It's black and white, and it has Joaquin Phoenix in it. And I think it's one of those things that, you know, Joaquin Phoenix has been doing these little films, you know, uh, 
I, I just remember three where he has a beard and I don't remember what the name is. Don't call it's something on foot. What's the name of the movie? On foot. Oh yeah, that one year. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like four movies that year. Something like that. that was, yeah. But but what what excites me is Mike Mills directing. I think that I think he has especially his writing, because the beginners, you know, he had one Christopher Nolan the Christopher Christopher Nolan one and also Christopher Plummer. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher Beginners. Palmer, rest in peace, he's dead, right? Yeah, yeah he passed away. 20th, so 20th weird, Century Woman, 20th Century Woman. Was an Ed Benning nominated for that one? I don't yep. remember for 20th Century Woman. Billy Crudup, I think, was maybe? No, yeah, I think she so, missed, actually. Maybe. I could be wrong. But, well, she was getting both the whole way in. But she was, yes. It was, nom- it was nominated for Spoonfay, I do remember. But yes. uh, he gets away for directing actors. And his scripts are, pro- are are usually pretty good, so that what gets me excited. And also, it's black and white. I think that and Belfast are gonna be those black and white films that make it in. Lots of b- black and white films this year. Yes, I mean lots. It's too, but you know, <laughs> we usually never get one <laughs> one of those. Well, it's a point film, but I, I I think I'm excited for it. I want to see what what's going on. You see, twenty four too, right? Yep. Yes, it is. Yes, so I'm telling you, there's a pattern. That lighthouse, that lighthouse will say 24. So I'm this is something. true. Next so, year, the Northmen we're going to get from the lighthouse director. Yeah, so, so that, that, it's getting interesting. Um, and then finally, we are running low on time, but I want to talk about one thing in particular. Those are all the trailers that came out. We had a slew of trailers to talk about. But there's one thing more that I want to be able to discuss, and that was the Toronto International Film Festival wrapped up this past week. And we had a slew of winners that transpired. Uh, some movies that have already premiered at other festivals, and we've seen their reactions forthcoming. But the TIFF, or the Toronto International Film Festival, uh, will usually have their awards which they present on the very last day. And what I've noticed is that if an American film... Uh, which usually always always wins. Uh, what will happen is that the People's Choice, as it is called, has a great chance to go the distance and actually get an Oscar nomination. So I find it fascinating that our top prize uh, was awarded. The People's Choice Award went to Kenneth Branagh's Belfast, which I know Dan's super excited for. None of us have seen this yet. But I know we're all. I know, I'm. I'm super thrilled about it. Um, but Belfast, directed by Kenneth Branagh, was your People's Choice Award winner for the Toronto Film Festival uh, this past week. Uh, now that it's wrapped up and officially, we've seen the movie that's come out on top. I think this would be a great crowd pleaser. Dan, do we have a front runner in Best Picture? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. When I saw this yesterday, I was like, Oh my God! Here we go, Belfast. And it's coming out just in time to where it's going to gain momentum as the weeks and months go by. And everybody's going to have a chance to see this. And I'm telling you right now, this came out of nowhere. Belfast came out of nowhere. I mean, all of a sudden, you're Belfast. I hear the Oscar experts talking about it. I'm like, okay. Then people are seeing it at Film Fest. Then it wins Toronto. And you're like, oh, boy, here we go. You know, the trailer comes out, and you're like, Oh, me and you talked about the trailer last, last episode. I'm like, uh, oh, the tea leaves starting to go into, and this is what this is what we love about award season. This is what we love about film. These are the kinds of things that happen and that you just get so excited for. And for me, it just seems like a movie that I'm just gonna absolutely love because of my background and whatnot. And um, and I know Kenneth Brown has had his up and down, um, up and down career. You know, a lot of people aren't the aren't the biggest fans of his. You know, but <coughs> out of self. <laughs> but, so, uh, huh. but the thing is, some of even the worst directors have in a magnum opus, and they absolutely make a mag a masterpiece in their filmography. And this could be the movie for Kenneth Branagh. I want to be able to highlight just to show you, for those who have won the TIFF uh, prior, the People's Choice, um, you have had Belfast this year. The year prior for 2020, it was Nomadland. The year before that, it was Jojo Rabbit. 
year before that, it was Green Book. In 2017, the year before that, it was Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Year before that, La La Land. Year before that, Room. Year before that, The Imitation Game. Year before that, 12 Years a Slave. Year before that, Silver Linings Playbook. You have to go back to 2011 for a movie called Where Do We Go Now to be able to find a movie that won this and did not ultimately go on to get a nomination, uh, let alone a win. Or, you know what I mean, to out have any sort of best picture nomination. The heat is beyond this. And then you have to keep going back until you get to 2007 for Eastern Promises, which missed out on a best picture nomination. Um, but to me, that just kind of bodes incredibly well for Belfast's chances, because if this is a, as pleasing of a crowd film as this, because Nomadland is not really a crowd pleasing film. It's not one that had a people has roaring and cheering. It's more contemplative, more like, oh, wow. Okay. It makes me feel something. The, but the fact that Belfast won, in a sense, it's not a contemplative film. From It could be. I haven't seen it. But for most people, say it's a very, it, it's an empowering film. It's one that kind of makes you feel a lot of tears were shed. And maybe this could be the chance for Kenneth Branagh to get a director and a, uh, has he won an, he's won an Oscar before, right? Oh, I can't so. remember. I think Hamlet has he not? may have been nominated for Hamlet, but don't quote He was me. nominated. And he was. I'm pretty sure he was. But while I looked that up, Malcolm... What are your thoughts of the movie Belfast and now that we have a uh, TIFF People's Choice Award and the fact that this correlates incredibly well with, you know, a Oscar nomination for Best uh, a Picture? I mean, I haven't seen the movie, obviously, but... Um, yes. So, but, I mean, it, it could be fun. I mean, I don't know much about it. It's Kenneth Banner... Um, I like Murder on the Iron Spear, so it could be interesting. So, yeah. Uh, Abe, for you personally, um, Belfast, what is your excitement level for Belfast? Uh, we weren't here last week. Tell me your thoughts on the, if you've seen the trailer for Belfast, um, what are your thoughts on Belfast and the fact that it won the People's Choice Awards and the fact that this correlates so closely with, of course. Um, More of an excitement, um, something, uh, it, uh, how do you call it? Raise your eyebrows? No, that's not the correct one. You know the correct thing. You know you have to pay attention to it because there's definitely a correlation that you have been mentioning right now. Like this is gonna go. I mean, it's like this as a crowd pleaser, as you say. Uh, Greenwood was a crowd pleaser, and that was the last one to one best picture that came out of that. Oh, Nomadland. Just mention, sorry. But yes. in a normal, in a normal circumstance, if you want to call it one way. Uh. But I think Kenneth Brand is. I, I really like his work. I, I, I like um, Modern on the Ring Express. His story movie was fine. You know? And he usually does these movies in England that nobody watches that I haven't watched either. But he knows. I, sometimes I, I go into his filmography just to see what he's doing next. And he has this film. He directed one from, uh, I think it was two years ago, one year ago. I don't remember what it's called, but he directed a film in England. He didn't go to a lot of praise, but. But he, huh? You know, he's a classical trained actor and director, and and he has an eye for it. And Jamie Dorman, I think he's really good. Like people may just remember him from Fifty Shades of Grey, but he he's a really good actor. So that's like that. What makes his stuff? And I think he's but, got Death of the Nile coming next year. No, but supposedly. It's, a it's something yeah, about they the push that Malcolm. They push that the next year. That's they what I said. They have to release them yeah, well, because checking. of the fuck here. I thought it was off this year. Uh, and, but uh, I'm intrigued by it. I want to watch. I definitely want to watch it, but I'm intrigued by it. And, I, and you know, if somebody's going to win director on five bits, Kenneth Brown, he's a good one. I like the. He's a great actor. He's a he great is a. Actor. He is, and he's a very consistent filmmaker. Um, exactly. Go ahead, Dan. And I'll tell you, there's a track record. And I, if you look at the Academy, with this, there's always tea leaves and there's always different things that signs that point to certain things and one of the signs that points to certain things is actors turn directors winning for best director in best picture uh mel gibson kevin costner clint eastwood to name a few and um i just want to say kenneth Branagh has never won an oscar he has been nominated for five oscars uh he was nominated for best director and best actor for henry v he was nominated for Best Live Action Short Film for Swan Song. He was nominated in 1996 for 1996's Hamlet. 
for Best Adapted Screenplay. And then finally, this is the one I remember, 2011's My Week with Marilyn, where he played Lord, Lord Laurence Olivier and got nominated for Best Supporting Actor. He has never won, which is kind of shocking because I could have sworn you would think someone like him would have won an Oscar in his early time. I thought he was nominated for Hamlet, but I didn't know what it was for. But Can I, I ask um, you guys a question? Yeah. Go ahead. It's just a question. When you when I say Kenneth Branagh, what do you do? What do you think, director or actor? Because I think director, and I don't Ooh. know if it's an age thing. But when you I, mention I, I Kenneth mean, Branagh, I think about the director Kenneth Branagh, the actor. For me, I think of um, actor because I always think of Gordon Lockett. He, Gordon Lockett is always the first thing I think of. Him, I think of Kenneth Branagh. But also, he was in Dunkirk. He was really good in Dunkirk. Gilroy Lockhart, which you said, knock him. He is. I think of him as an actor, but he was also Hercule Poirot and and uh okay. murder on the orient Express. as well he directed it but he but that damn mustache took took away his performance God, i love his i love that, that mustache, mustache. So oh i hated that mustache i just wanted to shave I, it I, I i love the mustache because i mean that, 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 that's what i mean that's what poor is supposed to look like because that's the way he's i think i was sitting too close malcolm and all i could see is the mustache i literally couldn't see it's just i felt like all i was looking at was a giant mustache when i was watching it was it. great and that's probably the, why i have a bad experience with that movie. um but funnily enough um peter Brenner won the bafta for director for um henry the <laughs> fifth wow. so he has a bafta um but what i was gonna say is that um i know him as a director first and foremost because when i first heard about him in my kind of budding movie watching career when I first started to actually look at things, it was Thor. Hearing he directed Thor and kind of like, wait, so what is this? And then going back and realizing, oh wait, he was a director, but he's also a screenwriter, an actor. He is a he's one of those like triple threats when it comes to, you know, an actor, director, and a screenwriter. So I think if anyone were to win an award this year, if it's not going to be him in screenplay, he's not an actor anywhere, but if he wins in directing I think it'd be incredibly deserved, and this I've obviously none of us have seen the picture, but this could be a great film to be able to, you know, witness um, to see him go home with the gold. Champion um, and, of the year, champion of the year as well. Exactly, um, and then other ones we have are People's Choice Documentary Award went to The Rescue, which is about the Chilean miners. Um, or she not the Chilean miners? The um, the the uh, that was another one. It's uh, the, the 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 Thailand. Um, what was that? Incident the kids called. that are in the cave, Thank you. And, and they were about to drown, and they got they rescued them out of the The divers. Cave. Yeah, yes. that was so, crazy. That was crazy. I'm so excited for this documentary yeah. Yeah. because I, I love stuff like this. Because, um, and I think this might be our front runner, but you know what happens to front runners in documentary, right? Oh, God, I forget. Don't they talk don't, about they front don't, runner. They don't get nominated. They don't get nominated. <laughs> yep, you used to me on the head, Malcolm. Uh, so look out for that one. I'm ex regardless if it gets nominated, I'm excited. Um, People's Choice Midnight Madness Award went to Tatane. Um, oh, you guys. So this trailer is crazy. It's bananas. And this is the movie that really came out the, out of the end of the tunnel at Cannes, guys. So keep an eye out for Tatane. Oh, 100 percent. Um, and I think Tatane is going to be interesting because could this be French's sub for France's submission into because they have like I think like three, um, like it's like it's like three three different movies they could have. One is happening, which won the Golden Lion in Venice and received incredible Ooh. praise. Um, that could be the case, which got really uh, high marks. And another one is um, uh, La Petite Mama. Is another one um, that I knew that I got a lot, a lot of praise. So this is another one. So France has a bevy of riches, but remember they also picked Les Misérables over Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which was also critically acclaimed film. I know, Abe, right? I know. So we'll see what they choose at the end, but they have a bevy of riches this year, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. Tatane is utterly bananas, and when does that come out? Actually, soon. I saw a trailer recently, so it's. When you start seeing trailers, it's coming out soon. It is. It, it, it is coming out soon, and I'm excited. Um, so, uh, quickly, I want to say the other things that were nominated, because usually they'll tell you what there was runner-up and whatnot. Uh, along with Bell Perth, you had Scarborough and The Power of the Dog both getting nominated. And um, we'll see what those two do. I don't think I've heard of Scarborough until the TIFF 
Um, but we all obviously all know the power of the dog. Um, I hear the doggy. Cue um, the dog. Cue the dog. Power of the dog. Get it? See what we see? What we did there? Uh, but no, that is kind of like the discussion. I can't wait to continue this discussion in regards to what we have for best picture. Because next week, look forward to our initial best picture uh, list. I'm getting mine uh, situated as we speak. As we speak, so look forward to that. But we're gonna wrap it up today because I have to go to bed to get ready to go up at 3 a.m. Because work switched my schedule. So Dan, where can the people find you? You can always find me at Dan Skabalan on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, uh, I'm a film critic in Orlando, Florida, and I write for a, a website called DisappointmentMedia.com. Um, I, I got a couple of good movies coming up this week. I got uh, Dear Evan Hansen, The Many Saints of Newark. So I'll, I'll be reviewing uh, Many Saints of Newark, so that'll be out soon. And I do a couple of YouTube shows, but they're on hiatus right now, so uh, just have to wait till next year for those. And Malcolm, where can they find you, sir? Um, you can find me on Tape Free Productions, where I host Rankin every Saturday. Um, we're going to continue going through the whole movie thing next week. We're doing, moving into the 60s. Um, and Late Night will be on um, this week. For, um, we're talking about Boy Meets World. Um, and you can find me over in Full Metal hosting um, trivia matches um, and stuff. There's a friend's match happening tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern. Fantastic. Um, well, by the time this comes up, that probably might have already happened. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm watching it. <laughs> Past tense. And then Abe, where can they find you? you can follow me. Uh, sorry. You can what was that? Today. I don't know. You can follow me on Twitter at Abraham25, where you can see all the mama me I think we go again and Shrek to love. Fantastic. Um, I mean, you've only, you've only, you only you haven't watched this month though, so I'm not sure if you truly do love mama me Here we go again. I have it in my computer. There you go. But I want to turn on the TV. I don't want to, like, I don't have, I don't. Sorry. Okay, you'll, you'll watch it, I know, before the, the year is done. And you can find me on Twitter at Cine underscore man, that's C-I-N-E underscore M-A-N-N, as well as on uh, YouTube, Manning Franks, here hosting Gone with the Wind, as well as the, um, on uh, WFMI News 2, our YouTube channel, where I do uh, reviews every other week in regards to different movies. This past we week was Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, and, of course, um... You can find us on Apple Podcast. You can find us on Anchor. You can find us on Spotify. We're gone with the wind. So look forward to that. Dan, you had your thumb. You had your favorite. Yeah, I want to re just real quick. We're going to be getting some special guests on some episodes in the, in the future. And just stay tuned for that. I was about to say, yes, we have some special guests already lined up. I'm looking forward to that. We have a schedule that is slowly starting to um, form as we speak. So buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. As they said in All About It, you fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy night. But it's going to be the bumpy night the best way possible. So that sounds really weird. Let's not use that. But I'm not going to cut <laughs> it because I'm already, I'm already too lazy. All right. Thank you all. Have a good night. And we'll both ask to be the winner. I'm not going to say it now, but possibly. Have a good day.